welcome back to the last of the FA-18 training missions in DCS World. Um, I have to be honest with you, I don't feel anywhere close to ready to do any kind of real missions even after having completed all of these trainings, but uh, I did want to at least go through them once to get a general overview of all the different things. So yeah, that's the thing. Uh, today's episode is going to be the JSOW training and then we will be done with the training videos. After this, we'll be messing around with the plane and just trying to figure out how to do everything. So let's go ahead and get this mission done and then we can move on to more freeform kind of things, I guess. So let's go. Welcome to the FA-18C Joint Standoff Weapon Training. You begin at 16,000 feet, MSL, headed for your target. You are in active pause. Your aircraft is configured as it would be for this portion of a JSL mission. Master arm is on. The aircraft is in air to ground mode. Waypoint one is set. Unless otherwise indicated, most highlighted button presses and spacebar presses will immediately forward the lesson to the next step. On your first time through the training, it is recommended that you listen fully to each set of instructions before taking the action that will move the lesson forward. When ready to continue, press the spacebar. I will press the spacebar in just a moment once I get my head tracking software running again because I forgot to turn it on. So we'll do that, turn that on, so now look around because it's kind of hard to look down at the cockpit if you're not able to move your camera. Okay, we got the head tracking going and we are going to learn how to do this, so spacebar to continue. In order to successfully fly this mission, you will need to engage the autopilot in two configurations, coupled heading barometric altitude hold and heading selected barometric altitude hold. You will also need to operate the HSI on the center AMPCD. Specifically, you must know how to step waypoints, designate a waypoint as a target, and set the heading bump. These topics have been covered in previous Hornet training flights. Review the instructions on the following screens. Okay, so we have it set to this and this, and uh, so autopilot set autopilot to coupled and uh, alt uh, altimeter mode, and then we need to uh, set that to our waypoint. So we do that by clicking on. Uh, it's already it's already highlighted. And we set the heading bug to the next waypoint by using that to turn it. Is our heading bug right now? Oh, turn it. Turn on the power to all the JSL by pressing PB6 JSC. Your first targets are hardened aircraft bunkers, pads. The first step is to set the electronic fuse for the AGM-154 and then PB-2, Delay-1, for delayed detonation. To because begin we're going programming through a the details of each target, bring up the JSAL display screen. This screen is the GPS weapon display containing essential JSAL information. It is the display you will use to program, monitor, and employ JSALs. In the upper left corner, the current weapon station, weapon readiness, mission mode, and weapon type are shown. In the center of the screen, the weapon alignment status is shown. Just below that is the weapon release settings. Around the edge of the screen are push button indicators for important functions, specifically mission display, release quantity, and step to switch to the next available station. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with this display. When ready to continue, starting with the AGM 54C on station 8, press PB4 mission. You now see all the details for this JSAL. To begin entering the required data Same via the UFC, program station 8 with the following data, not narrowing. When you finish, press the spacebar. Position. They want a latitude of north 45,0018 decimal 45. And for the longitude, they want an east 3,71936 decimal 4. And then we go back to elevation in feet. 
148. Enter for that. Toggle target UFC off. The next step is to program station 2. Press in the upper program station and 2 another with set. the following okay, data. So. When finished, press the space bar. 65. Enter. Position latitude north 45.0019 decimal. Five. Enter longitude east 37 19 46 decimal 59. Enter clear and back. Station in feet 108. Enter. You're done. Check your data entries and was, as mentioned in the tasking, your first two targets are located near each other, close enough to be attacked with a single JSAL salvo. Station 8 is targeting HAB number 44. Station 2 will target HAB number 48. Press PB11 and PB14. You are ready to begin the first attack run. On the HSI, mm -hmm. set the heading bug to 060. Set autopilot couple be all. When ready to fly, press the space bar. Six. Okay. Autopilot to couple and all and ready. Keep heading for waypoint one at a constant altitude. Increase speed to above 410 KIAS. Watch the HUD indication for time to max range and the HSI to check your position to the JSAL launch acceptability range. When in range, press and hold the weapon release button until both JSAL drop. That indication for time to max range, that's TMR. The HSI project, project to check your position for the JSAL launch acceptability range. Not sure. Oh, that's the big circle. And we've now hit in range. When in range, press and hold the thing. Guess we can do that now. Pigs away. At this point, you have done your job, and the rest is up to the J cells. Slow to below 400 KIAS. Bring up the target area on the AtFlir by setting autopilot, heading select, B Alt. Then weapon designate waypoint one. Maneuver to keep the target area in sight of the Atflir pod. Heading select. select. Okay, yeah, selecting the waypoint as a target automatically moves the FLIR over there, but I am not able to zoom. Oh, letting me zoom now? Oh, awesome. So now we can watch that. Not really sure what we're supposed to, how long that's going to take. If it's a bomb and we dropped it from this far away, I have to imagine it's just going to glide its way in there. But I don't know. I don't really know how that. I don't really know how a JSAL works. After this mission, I think I'm going to go and read the manual some more and try to figure out what works and what doesn't work, but or what what is what and what they're used for and things like that. And then maybe I'll go make a video about that to help you guys once I understand it better. But mostly, I just wanted to get through the training missions so that I can at least have seen everything that the game has provided to kind of you simulator has provided to help you uh, familiarize yourself with the aircraft and at the very least i feel confident flying the plane and uh, you know landing on the carrier all the standard flight sim stuff i just i need to become much more familiar with all the weapon systems and targeting systems and things like that So I'm not really sure how long it's supposed to take for these to actually hit.
Okay, well, um, since I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm not going to sit here and make you wait for an explosion that may never happen. So he said we were we did what we were going to do. J cells in the target area. Oh, active pause is on. Observe the attack results with Atflir. Then to continue, press the space bar. I stand corrected. I guess we're just waiting for them to actually hit now. So we're just watching a little screen over here. Oh, that was it. Saw a couple of explosions right there. I destroyed a couple of SU 27s. Your next target is a field deployed artillery platoon. You will be using a single AGM 154A aimed at the center of four self propelled howitzers. Your goal is to destroy or heavily damage at least two of the artillery pieces. The aim point is waypoint 2. You will use a target of opportunity attack. On the left EDI, press PB18 menu, then press PB3 E fuse, and then PB3, press PB12 for JSAL display. In the upper left corner, note that station 7 is selected. Press P toggle to TOO. This is a target of opportunity located at waypoint 2. On the HSI, step to waypoint 2. Designate waypoint 2 as a target. Press the spacebar to continue. On the mission page, note that target coordinates are now displayed. Return to the JSAL display page. We are now ready to begin the attack run. On the HSI, set the heading bug to match the target heading. Ensure autopilot heading select B Alt is set. When the target comes into view of the HUD, a diamond on the ground marks the target. On the heading tape, a small diamond will show target heading. When ready to continue and resume flying, press the spacebar. Mm -hmm. HSI set the target heading to match, set the heading bug to match the target heading. Alt set the autopilot to heading and alt. Target comes into view. A diamond will appear on the ground. When the target comes into view on the HUD, a diamond on the ground marks the target. On the heading tape, a small diamond will show the target heading. When ready to come, okay. When steady on the attack heading and the JSAL display, HSI, HUD, indicate you are in range, press and release the weapons release button. This is the boring part. Am I able to... Oh, because it's not a waypoint. I think this is already set to where we're supposed to be looking right now, so... Once we set it as the target, I think the pod already looked at the FLIR automatically and looked at that spot. Well, we're already in range. I'm just going to wait for us to level off. And... Hmm. Oh. I thought I had us already on that, but I guess not. Double more to it. Ahead and drop these now. Pigs away. With J cell on its way, observe the target area on the aft there and maneuver to the right in order to keep the target area in sight of the aft there pod.
<laughs> yeah, this is all really riveting, isn't it? Too bad we can't, like, fast forward through this part, just waiting for the bombs to get where they're going to go, but... Nothing I can do about that. <laughs> We're just watching the flare and waiting, I guess. Put it in a wide and in a medium. Wide, medium, and we'll zoom in once. Oh, looks like some bombs just... Oh, no, they're, they're shooting. Those are shooting. It looks like they're shooting. I imagine there's going to be another active pause thing again while we wait for the bombs to hit. and then G-Sound like... target area. Yeah. Active pause is on. Observe the attack results with AtFlir, then press the spacebar to continue. All right, now we're just waiting for the explosions to show up on the screen, so I'm going to actually go into narrow field. Yeah, these guys are shooting hard. Ideally, we'll see an explosion here in just a, in just a minute and be able to... Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. The third strike is against a target near Waypoint 3. On the HSI, step to Waypoint 3 and designate it as the target. Set the heading bug to the target heading. Ensure autopilot heading select, B Alt is set. Press the space bar when complete. One, two, zero. Autopilot heading select, and B Alt. The target is an A 50 mainstay in a revetment at Krems Air Base. The aircraft has moved since the last reconnaissance of the airfield. You will need to find it and target it with the AtFlir pod, then hand off the target data to the JSAL. Ensure you are on Station 3 and set it to TOO with bring up the mission display and target object. For this target, you will utilize a fairly tight spread of submunitions to concentrate the damage in a smaller area. Set burst height at 500 feet AGL with the following entry. Press the space bar when complete. Okay, yep. Yeah. To achieve an accurate target solution, you'll use the Laser Target Designator and Rangefinder, LTDR. On the right side panel, set LTDR to ARM. On the right MDI AFLIR display, press PB11 trig to set the LTDR to fire with a short trigger pull. When ready to continue and resume, turn towards the target, establish 410 knots indicated. When the target area is visible on the AFLIR, make the AFLIR soy. Hotas. Sensor control switch right short. Set AFLIR scene, HOTAS, sensor control switch, right short again. Waypoint 3 is near the large aircraft revetments. Use TDC to search for the target aircraft in one of these revetments. Once found, short pull the trigger for a laser range, then press TDC depress to designate the target. The target is now fully designated, when in range, Launch the JSAL. Okay, I think I'm guessing our airplane wing is in the way or something because they will see anything. Yeah, it looks like we're staring at our wing or something. It insists on... Uh, uh... 
I'm gonna get our stuff out of the way so I can actually see what we're doing here. All right. Now that we're there, we'll turn the autopilot back. Heading selected. Oh, alt, please. I don't know why it won't let me set the alt, but whatever. Now we can go to a narrow field of view. Getting in the way again. Uh, waypoint 3 is near aircraft. Easy to do is for a target aircraft. Zoom in. I don't see any air. Is that it right there? I'm guessing that's the aircraft. Any other aircraft near there? Select out. Guy. Yeah, it looks like an aircraft. Oops, I turned way too far. I was busy looking at the flare. Heading towards the target, 10 miles out. I'm not really sure what the range is. It's not showing up on our screen like it was before. So you're supposed to be able to do a short trigger pull. Oh. There we go. Missed a part of it. Now we're in range. Now we can drop it. Bigs away. Okay. So you have to hold the short trigger pull. Winchester. j -Sal. You have to hold the short trigger After pull. After j -Sal launch, turn off a direct heading to the target and then maneuver to keep the target in the app clear view. Once the j -Sal has detonated, press the space bar. We'll go back to their heading select. So, okay, so that's definitely our aircraft. Um, you have to hold the trigger down while you're pressing the uh, sensor control depress. So that's, or the TDC depress, sorry. Now we're turning off target to uh, make sure we're gonna be able to see what's going on. We're just gonna wait for the bomb to hit. And there we go. As analyzing BDA, wait a moment, I'm not really sure what that means. Partial success. At least half of the targets were successfully attacked. You may end the mission now by pressing escape or continue flying by pressing the space bar. Yeah, I think we've done enough already. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's, I guess, bombing stuff from really, really up high, but that works, and we kind of sort of figured it out, so I would call that a success. 
clearly I need a lot more practice, and you probably will too. So uh, that's it for the training series on the FA-18. I guess from here on, we're going to move into more mission-style things where we're probably going to fail a lot, but at least we'll get a bunch of practice and figure out how to use our systems in a more real-world environment. So thanks for watching the training series. I hope you got something out of it, and uh, I will see you the next time we post a video. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.